basically, I support legalization. I think that it would be positive. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 badass Louis Theroux moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the bravest and most audacious moments from the legend that is Louis. Which Louis Theroux documentary do you think was the most badass? Let us know in those comments. Number 10, Louis and the Most Hated Family. New flash brainiac, Christ was Jewish. The Westboro Baptist Church, an extremist sect primarily made up of one family, became infamous for their practice of picketing soldiers' funerals, and in a 2007 documentary, The Most Hated Family in America, they welcomed Louis into their homes. Providing access to their thoughts and the events of their daily lives, their hospitality towards the journalist was sharply juxtaposed with their bizarre and offensive beliefs. They liked Louis, but that didn't change the fact that he was going to burn in hell. I think you laughed at the idea of me in hell because maybe it made you feel like you weren't going to hell. Louis maintained his usual calm humor throughout, countering their statements with deadpan questions and comebacks. The family became more hostile when he returned for a follow-up documentary in 2011, but Louis only got sassier. As much of a, n a nice guy as you are, you know that you're one of the chief workers of iniquity in the whole history of man. You know, I mean, you're up there with Pontius Pilate and Pharaoh. Are you being serious? Oh, yeah. Number 9. The Louis Rap Never afraid of a challenge, in this episode of Weird Weekends, the BBC journalist stepped fully outside of his comfort zone to better understand the rap world. I gotta hate this money, it's all on me, we gotta get this cheese, Louis, it's all we Louis, need, Louis. I gotta make this yep, money. Louis, Louis, you're supposed to let me do my part first. Oh, sorry. He might not be a natural, but Louis definitely understood the assignments. Despite his modest English persona, he found plenty to brag about. You know his money doesn't jiggle, it folds. The Louis rap battle went out live on a New Orleans radio station with the option for listeners to call in and give comments. We gotta get this cheese, it's all we need. I gotta make this money, it's all on me. Louis, Reese and Big and the BBC. One caller dismissed Louis's efforts as simply wrong, but this has to be a case of so wrong it's right. It was brave anyway, and for entertainment value, it can't be beaten. My money doesn't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I want to see you wiggle wiggle, for sure. It makes me want to dribble dribble. Number 8. Louis interviews the most violent inmates. You stabbed another inmate? Yeah. For what reason? Screw altercation. In 2011, Louis visited Miami's notorious main jail, where alleged criminals are incarcerated while awaiting trial. Mixing among some of the most violent inmates, Louis delves into the unforgiving culture of the jail, where the majority of time is spent in communal cells, the weak are preyed upon, and the fighting is constant. It's made clear to Louis that he wouldn't last five seconds, but he shows no fear and keeps asking those difficult questions. You ain't gotta prove yourself, you just gotta get your little wreck in and see, see where you at. You see where you at? What do you mean? See where you at. You might come here, but you might be snitching on somebody's case and you might tell something. You wanna know who you will, that's all. In one particularly spine chilling moment, Louis meets a prisoner held in solitary confinement for stabbing another inmate. Previous subjects have been interviewed in crowded places, but we know that this guy is dangerous as the bars stay firmly in place. Louis remains unfazed, but the sense of threat feels real. So you came in when you were 16? Can we see your face? Why not? Because I don't want you to see my face. Number 7. Louis enters the hijacked building. Sheriff, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, sure. One of the officers has just fired some shots. Louis habitually puts himself in awkward or dangerous situations for the sake of his work. But in 2008's Law and Disorder in Johannesburg, he took things to another level. The documentary, described by one critic as a gobsmacking film shot in a city plucked from the pages of some kind of dystopian novel, focused on the severity of crime and lack of security and policing in the area. What would happen if we can't go in? I do want to go in. Louis was attended throughout by local private security, but when they were reluctant to enter a hijacked building at night, Louis decided to do it anyway. Reckless? Maybe. 
and the hijackers weren't particularly frightening as it turned out. What exactly are we afraid of? <laughs> just, just guys with guns here. Yeah. But when he calmly walks up those dark stairs, you can't help but feel impressed. Number 6. Louis in Johannesburg While Louis was in Johannesburg, Louis meets some of the most frightening characters of his career. But although accompanied by minimal security in a volatile foreign city, he still gets right into the thick of things. In one tense scene, he's warned to be careful about what he says to an angry crowd in case they turn against him. In another, he interviews a wanted man who seems capable of anything. If I've got a child there, you're saying you would uh, you would hurt the child to, to find I out the took information. The child, I put it in oven. Whether speaking to government officials, local vigilantes, or ordinary people struggling to exist in the dangerous landscape, Louis doesn't shy away from the realities of life for the people there. His face, my Malevin's face, was there. They they are, they are wanted. There were, his, his face was on the paper, but they don't care. He takes his usual approach of asking the pertinent questions in an unassuming way, but the stakes feel higher than usual. Number 5. Louis and the Scientologists Louis cites his Scientology movie as one of the proudest moments of his career, and it's true that getting anything on film regarding the notoriously secretive and influential religious sect is something of a feat. Louis. Um. Louis? Louis. Okay, the road's closed, you're trespassing, and you need to leave. A apparently, it's a, it's a public road. No, it isn't. The most iconic moment of the documentary involves a face-off on a dark road. The Scientologists have cameras, so does Louis. They say he's trespassing, he says it's a public road. Look, are you so stupid you cannot see the sign that says road closed? But look, Is it's... Is there anything about that that you don't understand? We, closed? Look, well, look, I've got a permit Do you know what a neighbor. road means? The scene quickly slides into the absurd, with Catherine, a possible member of the Sea Org, a dedicated branch of Scientology, becoming increasingly frustrated at Louis clearly enjoying his role as the mild-mannered antagonist. And I don't want him filming me, so tell him to stop. Well, you're filming us. Tell him to well, stop. Well, you tell him to stop. Tell him to stop. You tell him to stop and I'll tell him to stop. How about that? Stop. The face-off with the cameraman is particularly special. Can we talk to you? Are you in the Sea Org as well? Number 4. Louis Eats with the Prisoners Before his visit to Miami, Louis's first deep dive into America's prison system was back in 2008. With his critically acclaimed documentary, Louis Theroux Behind Bars. Tell me what you're doing over here, you're just relaxing? We're the white guys. Are you the white gang? That's right. Yeah. Strolling around San Quentin, California's oldest state prison, Louis interviews guards, at-risk inmates, and serial murderers who discuss prison life and the divisions within. In one scene, Louis sits down with some gang members over lunch. Prison rules. If you, if you did, you'd get beat up. Who would beat you up? Me. <laughs> they fill him in on the rules, who can sit with who, who can share food, and how they might deal with those who break ranks. As Louis crosses the crowded canteen, while the inmates turn to stare, it's a striking image, and a wonder Louis doesn't look more intimidated. The mob, yeah, like, like two or three dudes would just attack you. Three dudes would come up and attack me? And do what, pummel me? Punch me? How bad? Until the cops stop him. Number three, Louis and the weaponized dog. The LA Stories documentaries are some of Louis's lesser known work, but they prove that the journalist doesn't need a big premise to bring us some badass moments. In City of Dogs, he meets some men from Compton who train pets as weapons against crime. You scared? Yeah, I think I am a bit scared. No, Are don't be nervous. Nervous. You're not gonna feel it. <laughs> After watching one of the weaponized canines at work, Louis agrees to let it have a go at him too. Is he scared? Yes, and he looks it. Stealing! But never one to shrink from a challenge, he stays calm, stands his ground, and doesn't back down. The trainers are clearly impressed. Number two, Louis and the Nazis. 
Back in 2003, Louis traveled to California to document the activities of conspicuous white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Louis' interview style has always been carefully non-aggressive, letting the interviewee feel like they're getting their point across, rather than being grilled. But his subjects don't always take the same tack. You're a Jew. That's why you got so much animosity. Well, we, okay, That's why you we have can't so much say you don't look like a Jew. Oh. When visiting some Nazis at their home, they demand to know whether Louis is Jewish. It would be easy for Louis to tell them that he's not in order to get the interview done, but he refuses to answer. I don't feel as though, I mean, maybe you disagree, I don't feel as though I've kind of compelled you to say anything. No, or I feel no. as though I've been respectful and, and I appreciate that you've I'm not even debating house. the fact that you've been respectful to my house and to my people. It shouldn't matter and he tells them so. At this point, they become aggressive and try to make him turn the camera off. Their polite veneer is gone, but Louis sticks to his guns. I've exposed myself, I've exposed my family, I've exposed my brothers, my sisters, and my children. Expose yourself now. Number one, Louis and the audition. I think it's absolute torture, and my heart is with you when you do this, okay? So, good luck. After facing up to Nazis, lunching with criminals, and trolling Scientologists, maybe it's surprising that number one on this list is the moment Louis stood up in front of a room of musical theatre professionals and gave us a rendition of I Get By with a little help from my friends. Do you need anybody? I need somebody to love. Could it be anybody? I just want someone to love. An embarrassed Louis is a rare thing, but this was one moment where we really felt his pain. In this early documentary about the struggles of making it in the theatre world, Louis was unknown in the US, posing as a hopeful performer trying to get his big break. From my friends. Great, thanks Louis. Thank you. Agents and voice coaches did all they could for him, but the reactions in the room say it all. It was brave, very brave. He wasn't a great, a good enough vocal talent. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.